Hi, Sean and Allison here from Spoken Garden, and we're here to help you become a better gardener. And today we're going to clean our greenhouse. That thing right there. It needs to be cleaned, it needs yep. to be organized, and we're excited to show you our process and how we're gonna take care of that. Yeah, we're gonna clean the inside, like Allison just said, steps, process, all that stuff. It's gonna be so much fun. We have a lot of organizing to do too. Yeah, we do. In the greenhouse and then outside the greenhouse around <laughs> our garden too, which is coming up. So stay tuned for that. Hey, also, uh, this is a two-parter yeah. today, two-parter video. Uh, one, first part's uh, clean the greenhouse. Second part, we're gonna show you and update you on the coleus cuttings we took a couple weeks ago. Yeah, I think it was, what, four weeks ago? At least. I think at this time, yeah. so we have some yep. really fun results to show you. Yep. Yeah, we're gonna walk All over right. and see what's happening along the way. We've got some deadheading to do. Yep, so what's uh, what's going on over here? Yeah, we've got our beautiful mums. We are loving these colors. Look at the yellow center on this one. Beautiful. I love that. Oh my gosh. Isn't that just vibrant and just amazing. They're all just popping. Now these guys we overwintered for the last couple years. These have all been um yeah, just we've had them in these pots. We overwinter them every winter and they come back just huge and full. Yep. Looking good, looking good. I know they do. On our way to yeah, the let's head on house. In. Got lots of projects along the way. These are all lilies. We're gonna be um cutting these back soon probably. Oh yeah, they did really well this year. First year. Yep. Yeah, We've some. got a bunch of bulbs, I think, right? Yeah, I think so. I think we have daffodils. <laughs> we forgot. We don't even remember. So, okay, in the greenhouse in. we go. Oh my gosh. Okay, guys, don't judge. Kind of a mess. Don't judge. <laughs> got all these pots and things stacked up here. Look down here. There's our garbage. There's a oh. tray there. Some some assorted things. There's assorted things everywhere. This oh. doesn't look too bad up look here. Look at all the divvies. Yep. Oh, they're there. Okay. Um, but yeah, we've got all our pots and jars and watering cans and we've got all these cell packs. I mean, look at all this. We really got to get this cleaned up. No, this is driving me crazy. You, you can see, I mean, we've got tags here, some labels, and then look at all this dirt just left over. It's all over the bench, all the way around. There's some, um, what's it, some seed starter. There's some vermiculite. We got cactus mix, types of soil. I mean, we got we got some stuff here that uh, some packaging from this spring. I mean, oh my gosh, really got to clean this up. Yep. So this is this is not what you want your greenhouse to look like really all the time. You want to have it cleaner than this. I mean, even look behind here. Look at all that dirt. Oh yeah, yeah, don't show back there. Yeah. yeah. Oh my gosh. So and then gross. I mean, we got some spidery webby stuff there. Look away if you're spider averse. I know some of you know I'm terrified of spiders, and I had a pretty big one chase me out of here a couple weeks ago. Oh yeah, it was so. pretty ugly. Um, yeah, you know, it, it's typical of a greenhouse. You don't really use it as much in the summer. We use it for storage, obviously. We get we finish like Sean said with our seed packs, and we just kind of store them over here. Yep just to keep them out of the yard. Well, we, we get in a hurry too, you know. I mean, Definitely. We're, we're in a hurry trying to get things done and we just shove things aside and then move on. So, but we're gonna clean stuff up I today. I know, I'm really excited about this. And we have a few steps to take here. Um, also, um, I don't know, Deshaun might have just, I don't think you pointed this out, right? I didn't. We need to get this mat cleared off, cleaned up, cleared off and ready to use. Now this is a mat we added last year. This was um, used in order to- It's our heating mat. Heating mat, yeah that um, it was very successful for all of our plants and some of our cuttings last year. Mm -hmm. There are some, all the coleus cuttings we mentioned earlier are, it's actually a little too cold out here for them still. Yep. Um, this is actually a cold frame. This isn't a heated greenhouse. So some of that stuff we gotta be careful with. Yep. So we actually just take it inside in our garage. Mm -hmm. Totally, yeah, the coleus, they won't survive right now with cold temperatures nighttime, but some, of, some other ones will. We have a temperature regulator uh, mechanism right there a uh, little thermometer that's hooked up to this heating pad and what happens is is if you don't know this already that gets plugged in uh just to a, a 110 outlet uh extension cord and then this reads out and we can monitor the temperature on that it reads it through this little cord right here that's wrapped up here and it's got the, the end of that you stick it down into the um you stick it down into the pots and um it basically measures the temperature in the soil of those pots as they're sitting on this heating mat and then you can see relatively pretty close what the readout is up here and that's what your temperature is so that's how that works and that's how we use it yeah we loved it, it, it we're actually going to purchase a second one this year to kind mm -hmm. of extend some growing or some heating space yep, we need to do that 
So guys, we're gonna clean all this up. Um, we're gonna go through some steps with you, how we're gonna do it sequentially and logically, and then we're just gonna get to it. Let's do this. So guys, first off, what we need to do, the very first thing is get all of this stuff out of here. We gotta get all these things out of here, all of these pots, these trays. I mean, we even have bulbs in here oh, that I we know. need to get out of here. I mean, look at that. There's those. This is from last week when we, the week before when we did all the transplanting. We still gotta go plant all these. So I mean, but these are gonna get set outside then after everything gets cleared out of here, we have to, and, that, and when I say cleared out of here, that also means rolling up this mat very nicely and setting that outside. Because once that happens, then we need to actually sweep off the, all the benches, get all the cobwebs off, get all the dirt off, and we're gonna try and do that as best we can. And then once that's done, we will start spraying the inside plastic inside here. And we're gonna try and get every surface we can and we're gonna wipe them down with a mixture of soap and water. It's dish soap and water. We just mixed this. Uh, for the mixture on this, we just literally took the dish soap, Dawn dish soap, put it up here and just squeezed it, gave it a good squeeze, and then we just added water to it. So that's it, that's our measuring. We're not gonna get too exact. Use whatever you're comfortable with. You can also use vinegar. Yeah, you can. we didn't have any, we ran out, so. Yeah. Soap so, and water. Yep, soap and water always works and it's it's still really good. We're not mixing a big bucket of it either because it would work that way fine, it'd be fine to do that, but we don't wanna have extra soapy water left over because we feel like that's wasteful. And then we have to go either try and use it somewhere else or just dump it out uh, either in the sink or just you know out somewhere and we don't wanna do that. We don't wanna waste that. And so we wanna be responsible, so we're just gonna use this. I guess that's probably it, right? We just need to get started and like Sean said, we gotta move, we just need yep. to just do it well and, move it and, out yeah and, and part of moving the stuff out too and then tr getting it back in here it's going to force us to organize all of this get it condensed get it clean relatively clean we're not going to like scrub everything down and wash everything down um it's just it's a lot of work right now you can do that if you want if that if you think that makes a difference for your greenhouse and growing everything go ahead especially if you have trouble with any mildews or uh you know different types of diseases or insects or anything, then you need to definitely scrub or at least rinse down everything and let it dry out before you bring it back in. Uh, we haven't had those issues, so we're gonna treat it as it's fine um, until we see a problem. And most of these have already been sprayed out anyway, so I think we, usually well, what we do is store yeah. them down here. Yeah, yeah. We'll it's, keep them on the ground level so we have more yep. counter space, right? Well, yeah, this year we need to have all this counter space anyway because we have even more plants than last year that we wanna overwinter. So yeah, definitely put this down below. Again, it's gonna help us uh, get organized and condense everything, then we'll bring it back in. So I guess we can get started. Okay. So we got, um, Sean, you saw Sean sweeping everything. We kind of got that all. It wasn't even that bad. Nah. So we didn't even need the dustpan. But it still looks a lot better it than it did. so much better and all those. Yep. You know, cobwebs are going to happen, especially in a, you know, some place like this. It's outside and it really yep. doesn't bother us. I mean, yeah. they're not hurting us, but it does look yeah. a lot cleaner. It does. And, you know, if you have an outside structure kind of like this or any kind of outside structure that's detached from like your home, um, you're gonna have critters come in here. They're gonna wanna get out of the weather, get out of the rain, and uh, be somewhere a little bit more warm, definitely protected. I mean, we had, I know, I was this, just past, thinking. this past winter, oh, we okay. had uh, tunneling down here, and they actually tunneled straight across. Yeah, it was weird. There. So that's that was... It was like right there. Yeah, it's like right right in here, basically. Okay, oh, good. I missed some cobwebs. And a couple cobwebs. Uh-oh. But yeah, they de we, we're not sure what they were, but probably might have been rats or mice. Mice, mice. Yeah. yeah. So they want to be dry and warm too. Who knew? Um, so now what we're going to do is we're going to use our soapy water, spray it on. We're going to go section by section. We're going to soak down the area with the soapy water concoction, and then we're going to wipe it clean with this rag. So that's now, it. Now why? What's the? Pr I don't know if we. Oh, good about question. Yeah, the, the reason is is because. 
whether you're in zone 8B or you're in 4A or you're in 11, 11B, whatever, um, you're going to have fluctuations in temperature, you're going to have fluctuations in moisture level in the air. And if you have an enclosed space like this that doesn't have a lot of airflow, or even if it does, um, it still has, you still have the chance of having uh, mold, uh, bacteria, uh, fungus. Um, there's all sorts of things that can stay in your greenhouse and accumulate and so you want to have clean surfaces some people will go like with bleach or and again maybe with vinegar but we're going to use the soap and water um, solution and that should be fine for us we again we haven't had any like major diseases in here that we found so this should be fine um, if we do have a major disease uh, later on we'll we'll use the specific treatment to take care of that but this is a general cleaner is fine so that's why you want to keep it clean you want general cleanliness in your growing area so your plants are as healthy as they can be yeah and so what i'm going to do i'm going to start doing is i'm going to go section by section by section uh spraying it down and then wiping it and then with that type of system we'll be able to move through this and go pretty fast okay so so yeah just give it a good spray here you see it sudsing up as it hits the surface and we're going to get not only this area but we're going to go all the way down as far as we can we want to get all of the surfaces now see oh yeah and plus if you use dish soap over say bleach um it's going to have a good smell to it after you're done and you're not going to get that chemically smell now we hate bleach i mean oh. sometimes you need it but sometimes vinegar you do. can do the trick too yeah vinegar is a good one too we just forgot so, to buy some we yeah. need to get some more yep yeah so there you go. So cool. So hey, and a word to the wise, when you're doing a overhead stuff, stand, stand to the side. So when you spray this, you're not getting dripped on. Because that's the last thing you want to have happen, especially if you're not using, if you're using like bleach or something else, you want to make sure that you're not going to get that all over here or in your eyes or down, you know, in your mouth or in your nose. I mean, that's no fun. So... I don't know if you guys can see, but there's like, this is kind of gross, but there's like bird poop all over the side. Yeah. And the reason why, if I step out here, <laughs> we've got a giant mountain ash tree, a beautiful old tree right above us. You can see all the berries. And the birds are actually starting to test the berries to see if they're ready. I saw some robins up here today, and I don't know, if, I don't know if they're ready yet. You know, they kind of like them a certain way, so... But they'll usually come through here by November, and this whole tree will just be cleared out of all the berries it's pretty cool but with that you know the birds perch up here all kinds of birds so yeah we chose to put our greenhouse right below it but it was a perfect spot for us because we get full sun and yeah it yeah. works yep it works great because you've seen on our other videos we have good germination rates and uh we have healthy plants come out of here so we that's do. lots of cutting that's what matters we're really excited to see all the open counter space it's like oh so many possibilities yep Okay, you guys, we finished cleaning. We finished organizing for now. Oh it's, my gosh. It's always such a good feeling when you get everything tidied up. But Look at this. Will it stay this way for long? You know, that's a good question, but at least it looks really good. Look at all this. So everything's been wiped down, including um, this Heating heat mat. Yeah. We brushed off everything first. We wiped down everything. Well, Sean wiped down a lot of the, all the surfaces with the soapy water. Well, that was really, really... It just feels it cleaner in here. It just feels cleaner in here. Yeah. This has kind of been reorganized, but that's okay. We don't really... We use this a lot, so things will move around. But we like this because um, basically we put all of our seed starter mix, our vermiculite, and our cactus mix, everything that we have left over went on this side. And we did that because it's closest to the door, and we usually don't put plants right here. Mainly because, again, it's very close to the door. It might get too drafty. So we figured let's keep the dry stuff over there and then all of this stuff can get wet. So we'll have plants. Our, our next step actually is to start bringing our plants in to, you know, win overwinter them. So anything that we have that's tender or that we can move, um, any pots that we want to be really careful with, um, we're going to fill up everything in here. And all the really sensitive things will go right on the heat mat like we did last year. Cold sensitive. Cold sensitive. Thank you. And then we have storage space down here for more plants. Um, yeah, we're really excited. Yep, I know. I'm really glad we got this done. Check that off the list. I know, total check off the list. We've mm -hmm. been. It took us like 10 minutes, I think, from start to finish, you guys. 
So we did uh, clear out everything first, and then it was about 10 minutes to brush down, wipe down, and then reorganize. So yeah, maybe a total of about 15, 20 yeah, minutes. Yeah, probably closer. And this, just so you guys know, this uh, greenhouse is uh, six feet wide by eight feet long. Oh yeah, good call. So, so now that we're done in here, right, Sean, yep. let's head on over and check out the coleus cuttings oh, that yay. are out in the sun right now. Yeah, let's go check out their roots and see how they're doing. Yeah. So guys, part two, we are over at our pallet table and here's all of our coleus cuttings. Oh, you might be these. wondering, because you heard Allison say, well, they're, they're out in the full sun right now. And you would normally think, well, wait a minute, coleus out in full sun, that's like a no deal. I right? know, that's, that's probably not supposed to, That's not supposed to happen. But these coleus are actually part sun, uh, part shade. So right now they're doing fine. We're not gonna keep them out here, but we wanted to put them out here uh, so they're nice and clear and you can see all of them. We'll move them really fast here after one uh, we're done talking with you guys. So what we have here is we've got all of our cuttings um, and some over here too. And these big ones right here, these are the cuttings that were in water. And you can see, look at all that new growth that, on them. Yeah. I mean, isn't that amazing? These look oh, just awesome. And they actually have the breaking buds down here on the side uh, of, the, of the stem there. So what we're gonna do is, and they're all doing that. They've all got different rates of growth on them. They're all, all looking really good. We're gonna check the roots on these. So what I'm gonna do is just do this real quick. I'm gonna put my hands in there like that. I'm gonna cradle it with on both sides. I'm gonna turn it upside down. This should be formed fairly well. So, okay. So no cuttings on, or no roots on the outside. Interesting, because there were tons of roots in the water mm -hmm. before we so, transplanted. So but, they're in there. But we know they're in there because look at all the new growth. And it's nice and healthy, hasn't lost any of its leaves yet. So that's really good. I love, I just so, love those coleus. Uh, these are beautiful. And good thing we took the uh, regular cuttings here and here and here. Um, that went right into the soil. We'll check those in a minute, but yeah. these even have even more They've uh, really growth. gotten big, I know. They, they look like they have more growth than the ones that were in the water. So that's interesting. So, all right. No circling roots no yet. Circling nothing, yet. nothing to look at. Okay, well. So, all right. And while we're here, why not? Let's check the I know. And nada. So, okay. Okay. Well. well, I'm glad we looked. We'll keep looking. Keep checking. Now, these guys. Yeah, look at those. Those are probably doubled or tripled. These are awesome. So nice. Oh yeah! Oh, look at all those so nice, nice, white, look, whitish right. looking, healthy roots there. They're doing really well. So awesome. developing really well, you guys. Love seeing that. So usually, and we already mentioned this, but we take these inside at night and we usually bring them out to the greenhouse oh, during the day, yes. if it's not too cold. And right now it's not. So. Yeah, during the day it's not too cold at all. Look at this, oh. this even has even more roots circling down below and doing its thing. We might need to yeah. try like pot those up pretty soon. Uh, maybe, yeah, maybe. We'll give it a few, couple, couple more, more weeks. weeks. Okay. Yeah. So, and guys, uh, just to make it really clear, we take these inside at night because our nighttime temperatures are way below 50 degrees now, and we don't want to run the risk of these dying in those colder temperatures. It doesn't even have to be freezing, really. We've noticed in our area with coleus, um, if it's below that 50 degrees, what we've noticed is, is they just start dropping their leaves, and as it gets colder and they get more exposure to that cold weather, that cold air, they just kind of peter out and die. They die all the way down to the ground. They just they lose all their leaves and they just wither and, and die. So we're not running that risk, and that's why at nighttime, we, uh, before we go to bed, uh, before the sun goes down, we take them in and take them into the garage and uh, keep them at least warmer than what it is outside. So and not on the ground either. We keep them elevated. The yes, definitely. Just to be clear too. So now here's, this is interesting. Oh, it's so pretty. So yeah. it had a leaf over here that was just like this. It lost it because you can see you can see that piece of the stem there. You can see where that was attached. So it did lose that, but it's got nice new growth here. It's got good growth right here and here. And I'm I'm going to take a stab at it and say it was exposed to 50 degrees or less uh, weather, uh, air, air temperature, and that's why that one leaf uh, dropped. So because we have had some leaf droppage on these, but overall they're looking still really good. There's a few right there if you can see them right there but besides that nothing oh look at that cute little guy yep so this one right here you can see it's, it's got so a little tiny. dieback right there but that was probably after we took the cutting 
and there's nothing really to grow off of there. There's these two leaf axle buds right here that it's actually growing from. You can see right there and right there, and it's got that new growth. So this is very promising. We want to encourage this plant to keep growing. And so I'm going to loosen that up and see what we got. No visible roots yet, but we got we have that new growth, so that yeah. means it is growing. And while it's growing on top, that means it's also growing down below. So just because we can't see it in this soil, in this pot, doesn't mean it's not growing. So one I'm really concerned about is this one because it lost oh, all of its extra, all of the large leaves that we harvested with. Now it's got this right here. It's got these guys and it's got this up here for new growth. That's a good sign. We have to really baby this one, watch our moisture levels, uh, how wet we're keeping it in the pot, and then it's light levels and make sure it does not get below 50 degrees exposure um, so it does come out of this healthy. And a whole new plant. So, yep, nothing yet. Is that a root right there? Allison just saw this. Yeah, I see that. There's a, there's a root right there, so that's Yay. good. So we're gonna keep that really, we're gonna take care of these really well and we're gonna make sure we're getting everything they need. Okay, one more, just one more here. So you can see that new growth, awesome. Let's see. I'm not really seeing anything. So, not yet. But we got that growth on top, means the awesome. growth on the bottom's happening too. So, should we update them on the African daisies? Yeah, let's and check the, I, uh, these guys. I was wondering, real quick, let's show them um, right oh, here. We have yeah. one water cut, actually, three water cuttings going They're right all now. They're looking really good. So, aren't those so pretty? I just love those colors. Look at all those roots. Look at the roots. They're and doing this, awesome. now, we remember this was a four week. Um, we took these cuttings four, four weeks ago. Four or five weeks ago. And the orangey ones we took probably eight weeks ago. Yeah. Yep. Now, the other thing going on here, maybe I better get on this side. Sorry, close up. Um, these are all the ones that we just transplanted a couple weeks out. From the front yard. Weeks ago. They've actually put here. on some more some more growth, it looks like, since we transplanted. Oh, they really have. So they're nice and healthy. Look how tall this one got. Yep. It's like stretching a little bit. So those are great. We're treating those like the cuttings, you know, and keep them inside. I mean, all the same rules apply. Mm -hmm. So just to make sure, let's check these yeah, out. Yeah, I know. I'm really out. curious about those. So these were these were taken the same time, I believe, these were. I think so, yes. And so they're about eight weeks out. So you can see, though, they've got nice, new, healthy growth on top there. So that means they should be growing on the bottom, too. So, oh, look oh, at all that. Yay. Oh, yeah. That is awesome. Now, we used uh, root hormone on these, and look how it took. It took really well. That's yeah. exciting. Yep. That encouraged these roots to these cuttings to grow roots and become whole new plants themselves let's check this little guy i'm pretty sure pretty sure this one's doing just yeah, as good as I this bet. one oh so. that's so great so. now these guys are tender perennials in our zone here in zone 8b but um okay nothing look there nothing yet not seeing really kind of a little yet. guy so yep doesn't surprise me yep. right behind me here you guys if i can scan around this is the african daisy that we took cuttings from isn't that beautiful Kind of a, it's called uh, Margarita Rioja Red. I think that's how you pronounce it. Yep, got three more of those. Good. Plus the ones in the uh, in the water. Oh, we have water. We should check. Do we have any? Take a check. Anything going on? I forgot those were over there. You know what? It's been eight weeks. I don't see anything. Yeah, I don't either. It's interesting. So water cuttings, not so. Not so much. Not so good with the African daisies. No. So. All right. Now here's one of the lavender cuttings that we took at the end of summer. Um, you can see this has grown a lot. It's put on a lot of new growth since we stuck totally it in. Totally has. So should have some really good roots on it. Oh, yeah, look at that. Oh, cool. All that there, all that there. It's got that, that off-white look to them. Nice and healthy. Looking good. Can never have too much English lavender. Mm -hmm. Good thing, because how many do we have here? We have, we have at least three. Those three. Yep, these three, and then... Three and then water over here. I think, we'll yeah. I'll we'll check those, check or maybe two. Yeah, maybe it's only two made it out of that. Oh, yep. Look at all those good-looking roots there. Isn't that cool, you guys? Oh, love, love it. it. We love taking cuttings. We need to take some cuttings pretty soon. Probably. By the way, if you guys want to learn more about plant propagation and um, you're really interested in it, uh, we have a, actually a class um, that, we're, that we're offering on Amphi. And so uh, go to Amphi.com and uh, type in Spoken Garden. You'll be able to find... We have an intro to plant propagation. 
um, as a free class, and then we also have taking stem cuttings for plant propagation that cost a little bit of money, but we go into depth about what's going on with these, uh, these stem cuttings, what to expect, how to treat them, and then if you want to actually uh, take cuttings of a specific plant in your garden, we help you with that specifically. Um, that's something that um, beforehand we'll get information from you for. We'll research it, we'll bring the information to that session, and then you'll get the one-on-one -on -one co uh, coaching with that. Okay, you guys, that's a wrap for today. We're super excited to have that project checked off the wow, list. Wow, that was so much fun. Yeah, it was fun. Yeah. Actually, it feels good to be organized and the coleus cuttings are coming along, so we're looking good over here. Yep. We're excited. Yep. If you guys have any questions about what we did here today, go ahead and leave them down below for us. We love hearing from you. And make sure to subscribe if you haven't already so you get updates on our latest videos. Yeah, and um, thank you for watching and for being here today. Thanks, guys. And we'll see you next time. See you next time. Bye. Bye-bye.